Don't worry about what people are going to want to buy. You need to make what's in your heart. That's when you're making your best work. Susan Gottsleeg built this studio in 2003 and I came out to work for her in 2004 as her assistant and to help her around the studio. Then in 2013 she decided to retire and I was able to find three partners to buy the studio from her. When I was at UFC, one of the reasons why it didn't work out for me was because I went to the fine arts department, I took drawing, I took art fundamentals, and I took archaeology and English and art history and all this stuff that had nothing to not really anything to do with making art and trying different things. And at the end of that year, they asked me if I wanted to specialize in painting or drawing or printmaking or photography or sculpture. And I had no idea because I hadn't tried most of it. <laughs> and glass was one. I, it was in order of things that I knew nothing about. Glass was the top of the list. So I took a glass blowing class and just really loved it. For me, it was my thing. What is it about glass blowing that attracts you? Working with a liquid, I, it kind of an extension of where I was at with paintings. I, I used a lot of watercolor. What I loved about that was how you could put all these different colors together and they would kind of swirl. I found the same thing in glass, only it was a bit thicker, and, but you could, you could pick up the different colors and melt them and they would smush together and swirl. I'm a creative person. I make stuff. It doesn't, and it doesn't even have to be glass. I just happened to stumble into glass when I was 19, and I loved it very much, and I got really good at it. And I love doing something I'm really good at. I find that very satisfying. How long does it take to become a good glass blower? Uh, 20 years and counting. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, it takes a lot longer than that. To, to get really good at it. So even now, if I've got a new idea, it, it takes me probably two years to get my skills and figure out how to make that thing. This is the hot shop. So a glass blowing studio is called a hot shop and then the grinding equipment, that's called the cold shop. In here, the ambient temperature in the summer when it's hot outside can get to about 50 degrees Celsius. So, it's, it's a hot job <laughs> because if the glass gets too cold too quickly, it'll crack and, and then it's wrecked. Do you so. get used to the heat? Yes. You get used to the heat rash and you don't even notice that somebody comes along you're like, your face is all red. I'm like, oh, is it? This is the furnace. So this is made of refractory material, high temperature cement, kiln brick. The crucible inside is a high temperature ceramic crucible. It holds 250 pounds of glass. So this is where the clear glass is being kept? Yes. Wow, look at that. You can feel it. Those are Kevlar mitts. I can grab the glass with this. And this won't burn. This is the knockoff box, so it's just lined with burnt out Kevlar mitts. There you go. So it comes in these 50 pound bags. That's the graveyard. This is, yeah, so this is all glass that is clear and we're going to recycle it. You look at historical glass and it's not just for utility's sake. I mean, I think that came in more when they invented the factory blown glass, and, you know, machines that could blow glass. But when, when somebody's actually making something by hand with molten glass, there's always an aspect of putting something of yourself into it, and making it beautiful. You have to put your heart into it. It's gotta be you. Sitting down, you're like, okay, I want to make something so I can sell it. What are people going to buy? And then you design work and make your art that way. Nobody's gonna buy it. When people buy art, whether they know it or not, they're buying a piece of that artist's heart. I'm trying to justify in my own mind where the value is from buying that local thing that's costing, in some cases, even as much as 10 times more than if you go and buy it from somebody in, uh, in Walmart. If you buy glass from me, for example, if you need a repair, that's sort of thing, you bring it back to me and I can, I can fix it for you. Well, sometimes I fix it for you. 
I would really like to see more people incorporate handmade things into their lives, local, something that was made by your neighbor, something that was grown by your neighbor. I really urge people to don't worry about buying so much stuff for a low price when we don't really need that much. There's something that just adds to your whole life if you just have a few things, but they're really good quality, they're gonna last forever. I wanna ask you, because you're an artist, and we, we have conversations with artists often, where it's, it's so satisfying to make something and being able to express yourself, but can you make a living out of it? You have to have a good stomach for financial uncertainty, <laughs> but yes. Absolutely, you can make a living at it. Is it an expensive art form? Yes. <laughs> well, to start out with, our glass blowing equipment is really expensive to build. We use high temperature castable cement and it's run on natural gas. So we buy a lot of gas. We buy a lot of electricity. All our other equipment is electric. So get some business skills. Save all your receipts. Just get in the habit of saving all your receipts and keeping them organized. Do your bookkeeping every month. Don't wait until April. <laughs> There's just something so satisfying about using something that was made by hand and it's beautiful and the person who made it was thinking about how you were going to use it, was thinking about how your hand was going to wrap around the glass. When you get up in the morning, what is the single biggest thing that drives you to come to your studio? Why do you do it? I can't imagine doing anything else. And here you go, there it is. That'll awesome. hold a beer for you. This is going to be, this is going to be a, a treasure present because I know there's not another one like these. I know you've made it. I know who you are. And I can tell people, this is my beer mug. Fellows out there, mine, all mine. <laughs> you too can become part of this journey. Come help us. Let's celebrate these businesses together. Donate to our site, www.forwardtofavor.com, and we will bring you more of these exciting programs.